And right now, the next generation uncut sheets are $35.50, C10, 885. One more thing to take a look at, and that's the Future Communicator Soundboard Pin. And I love I, that. I agree with you, the lines yeah, on this. I love this. I'm actually going to put it on. All right. Because I like this so much. Goes this on. is so, look at this. That same rare earth magnet. It's on. It's a sharp looking piece of jewelry. And memory. you know what? I just realized by putting it on, my pin that I'm wearing today mm -hmm. is, makes holes in my jacket. Mm -hmm. And even after dry cleaning, those holes are there. This is not going to ruin your ruin your clothes. Oops. <laughs> it makes that great it's sound. It's not going to ruin your clothes at all. This is fat. You know what? They should make all pins like this. That's true. With magnets so they don't ruin your clothes. That is absolutely true. In fact, I, we have another one. Data. Over here. Data. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> He's on the night shift. That's just... There you go. Well, it's great. It is, it is it's a great, great sound. And if you catch it just right, I was able to do this once. Oh, it's a continuous. It starts looping itself. Yeah. That's um, obviously, you know, the busy signal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hi, this is Commander Jean-Luc Picard. I'm not in right now. Yeah, I'm on, hold. I'm on hold myself, actually. <laughs> That's the one thing. Don't you hate when that happens? You, well, you know, I know the future is going to be a better place from Star Trek The Next Generation because you don't have voicemail. That's true. It's the we don't. worst invention in we the don't. 20th century. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, kiss privacy goodbye. Now there's voicemail. Yeah. And uh, we head to the phone lines one more time on the show and say, hi, you're live on QVC with Marina Sirtis. This is Karen from Blacksburg, Virginia. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi. I ordered um, the communicator uh, Christmas ornament. Mm -hmm. Oh, this the, the Christmas ornament? Yes. It's great. Do you have kids? Uh, yes, I have a five-year-old son. You're going to have to hide that from him. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> you really are. But, Marina, I'm very excited about talking to you. I am an extreme Star Trek fan. I oh, go to okay. all the conventions. I got the uniform, everything. My uniform? Well, no, I have the, um, uh, the uh, first... Season Star Trek uniform plus okay. I ha have the other, the new edition Star Trek uniform. Yeah, well, actually, the girls still wear uh, basically the first season uniform, but just with a little collar. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same uniform mm -hmm. the girls wear. The boys wear the jacket and the pants. Right. Yeah. And, you know, but they they're all very uncomfortable. I have to be honest. Well, um, mine mine is comfortable. Is it? Yeah, it, so well, I had mine made. Oh, well, yeah, well, we have ours made, too. Yeah, <laughs> they just have to we, melt us down and pour us in every morning, you know. You know, it's an interesting point. In the uh, original series, they had to find an inexpensive material to work with, so they used, that's why velour. Velour uh -huh. was very inexpensive. Problem was, though, uh, Desilu Studios were so cheap that they made them use velour, but after about three dry cleanings, they were shot, shot yeah. and they had to go back and, and create them again. So yours yeah. are made of a, a much spandex. nicer fabric. Yeah. Well, they're made of spandex, or, or a spandex-like mm -hmm. fabric. Yeah. I don't want to you know, say bad things about the, the company, but um, they're, they're, they're uncomfortable only because um, the, the, you know, the collar, the stretch is kind of the wrong way in the fabric somehow, and they mm. kind of dig in your neck. The boys, of course, are always doing the Picard maneuver, which is <laughs> yeah. this, you know. <laughs> yes, I've noticed, you know, you've noticed that. that because that's because we're wrinkle-free in the 24th century, oh, yes. so um, that's why they do that. You said you go to conventions. Have you seen me? I've, have I ever been to Virginia? I've been to Virginia Beach. I know mm. that much. Um, no, um, Jonathan was supposed to be down here in Roanoke about um, a year ago. And they canceled it at the last minute, which I was very disappointed. Well, I'm sure I'll get there at some point soon. Well, um, I hear you're going to be in Washington in two weeks. Yeah, four weeks, or I think. four yeah. weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I might see you there because okay. we're thinking about going to Washington. Okay, well, come and say hi. I will. All right. Definitely. And enjoy your Christmas ornament, and thank you for the call today. Oh, you have a very Merry Christmas. And to thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. At the moment, our future communicator soundboard pin. Of course, this also showed up in parallels. Yeah. Your character, like I said, and it's, we talked about this in the beginning of the show, whenever your character is featured, it becomes one of the highest oh, no. rated episodes. Now, no. in parallels, Worf is going through all these alternate universes, and, well, you and Worf, well... We were married. Yeah, it was great. It was horrible. Well, if I'm looking <laughs> at it from Worf's standpoint, from I mean... From Worf's standpoint, yeah. <laughs> it, was, um, it was actually very interesting, and it was fun to play. Um, 
a kind of a semi-comedy in, in some mm -hmm. scenes, you know, role, because Troy isn't very funny most of the time. That's so true. so whenever we get a more light-hearted scene, um, I, love, I love those scenes. And now there's this whole thing happening on the Enterprise, if you like, where the boys are saying that Troy has developed a wiggle. And they do this now, that Troy's wiggling all over the place. I'm not convinced <laughs> I do that on the set, but they say that I do. I, Whenever I'm, I'm funny, I wiggle. I'm darn sure going to watch real closely <laughs> next week to find out. And as you contemplate that, before we say farewell here, let's take a look at everything still available in our last Star Trek Universe show of 1993. Over 1,600 of the original soundboard communicator pins have been ordered. And your choice of Star Trek pewter statues. We have a lot of new ones available tonight. Keep in mind, I believe it's sort of neck and neck between the Spock and the Deanna Troy figurine as to which one is the most popular. $17 to $18, depending upon the figure. C10, $734. The Star Trek Memories, signed by William Shatner, $94.50. F1917. Keep in mind, $4,500 were, were signed. 2000 went at retail. We got the last 2500. They're all ours. Each one is numbered and signed by William Shatner. That beautiful shot. Gates McFadden looking stunning. I wish stunning the beautiful stunning. woman, but that's, that's a great, great shot. $155. The QVC price. C12. 364. And that classic Star Trek collector's figurine set. $79. C12. 392. You're getting the first 2,500, uh, each box individually numbered. The Star Trek Science Titanium Necklace, $19.75. That's J13788. And the Star Trek Emblem Crystal Paperweight. This one's brand new. Everyone we've had in the past has sold out. $70 Fine Crystal C12702. And the Star Trek Communicator Ornament, $19.50, C12585, a QVC exclusive. It makes the communicator sound and it lights up. In very limited supply now, the Kirk and Picard autograph plaque, $215, both captain's signatures, C10657. And the Deep Space Nine gold foil comic, $28. Thousands of these have been ordered in the show. We have all the gold foil edition of this first print, first edition of the Deep Space Nine from Malibu, C12696. Also, the next generation fifth anniversary cards have completely sold out. Thanks for your calls on C10886. I think a lot of things are going to be selling out here in the review to the show. The Deep Space Nine Bajoran ear cuffs, very popular, $31. J21048. The uncut sheets, only a few dozen of these remain, $35.50, C10885. Oh, they're gone. Are they gone? No, no, we're just, uh, we're just practicing with that on, okay. the, on the preview monitor. <laughs> and also the Future Communicator Soundboard Pin, $29.96, J21418. Didn't have time to get to this Star Trek Annual number four. It's a first print of that with Leonard Nimoy's signature, only a thousand of these ever created, each one individually numbered. You have Leonard Nimoy's signature on it as well. $70 C7716. This has been fun, Marina. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you so it has much. been fun. Delightful. And now. I'm totally impressed with your knowledge of Star Trek. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm totally impressed by your abilities as an actress. We look thank forward to uh, seeing the uh, remainder of this last season as Deanna Troy continues to develop and the movie either next Thanksgiving or next Christmas. Your next convention, Washington, D.C.? I think so. I think it's Washington. There might January. be one before that, but I've got a feeling it's Washington. All right. Look forward to that and hope we can get you back on the air as well. Me too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you're on the line for anything, stay on the line. We'll be right back with gifts under $50. And in that hour, we're going to be meeting Marvin Traub, the man who took Bloomingdale's from one single department store and made it a nationwide phenomenon. We have his book coming up in the next segment. Stay with us, please.